Dew Prism, or as it's known in North America, Threads of Fate, was released in 2000. A ten-year-old me comes upstairs on a Christmas morning to find Santa had come through with that Ikea desk I had not asked for, but lo and behold, contained within its drawers was a fantasy adventure of two characters that would stay with me for life. This video is not going to give you the general overview and a brief narrative of why this game isn't more widely known. Avid viewers will have seen this all before, done by some other great folks. See the links below. What will I do, though, is tell you a bit about where we are today, specifically regarding the speedrun scene and the lack of major exploit found in this game, even 23 years after its release. Now, I can only really speak to what I've observed. The speedrun scene of this game goes back as early as 2005 and some of the early runners of the game put in some major work developing strategies and tactics that are still in use today. That said, let's jump ahead to where I come in. To give you a little intro to my experience with the Threads of Fate speedrunning scene, it's important to sit through this short history lesson. From 2020 until however long the politics ran in your place of residence, there's been a pretty major pandemic. It sucked. People stayed home, schools went virtual, and your drunkle got a little crazy on his social medias and took a vacation to Washington, D.C. that he doesn't like to talk about for some reason. For myself, this was a good time to reconnect with the things that make me happy, one of them being my favorite video game, and around that time, there was some major activity going on on the old Twitch.com website page. Barbecue Sauce was tearing up the leaderboards left and right, making improvements on the best times in nearly every category. I found myself once again enthralled with exploring the world of the game through his streams and on my own time. Night Night was also active at this time and snagged a Rue any percent world record from Barbecue's clutches for a time. Though this mysterious figure only uploaded his runs to YouTube, you never knew when they would strike, like a ninja or a boomerang wielding chimera. Retrotreak was also putting up solid runs at the time, nipping at Night Night and Barbecue's heels. He's responsible for one of the best guides for running the game, and he also sometimes does cool stuff like challenge runs. And Paladinite was working on putting together some really cool task videos leading to optimizations and strategies that have been put into practice even in RTA attempts. At this point, I began dabbling with the game and tried my hand at answering weird questions and trying to find any new strategies that could help these titans of speedrunning to attain higher heights some of which, looking back, I'm sure they were already aware of. Oh well, baby's first speedrun investigations be cute. A Discord server was spun up, and a community long dormant seemed to be in the throes of a revival. The next year after establishing the Threads of Fate community Discord server, I started speedrunning the game myself. I've learned a lot and have enjoyed the success I have found in categories that folks don't particularly care about. A year later, newer runners from the other side of the Pacific began their careers with speedrunning the game. Inagi and Popotan, who both featured the game at speedrun marathons individually. Inagi featured the main any percent run at Long Speedrun Summit 2022, logging a time of 2.50.56. And Popotan also featured mint any percent at RTA in Japan Marathon and secured a 2.44.28. Yours truly provided some English commentary on the English Restream channel for that one. All that to say that this small impassioned fan base also has a small impassioned speedrunning community. But let me tell you from experience, running this game is tough. This game, while being one of my favorites, having some of the coolest gameplay, bosses, and storyline, also has kind of a long speedrun. It's a bit of a pain to find a block of three hours of uninterrupted time to sit and play the game from start to finish, and I've got a full-time job, kids, and bills to pay. And the speedrun is this long because there is no major glitch or exploit for either character. So what? Go find one? Believe me, I'm trying. Heck, I've even observed, discovered, and recreated some cool shit in this game, and so have others. Yet so far, nothing crazy or game-breaking has been pieced together. But let's take a look at what we do have so far. Possible route optimizations that fall short currently. Drown Warps. RetroTweak first discovered this trick known as Platform Skip. It's maybe the only example of a straight-up vanilla-style glitch found in the game so far, and it's only doable in the English version of the game, for some reason. By jumping over this platform but falling down the hole, the game actually respawns you clear over here where a boss fight with Elroy's zombie rat dragon occurs. There's also this other not-so-useful version of this trick that can be done in the Tower of Maya, but it doesn't really save any time. 
The point being, there are some very specific spots where these respawns don't work as expected and place your character in a different location. Perhaps there are others to be found. Perhaps this could be manipulated somehow. Tie-dye Goratan. This little exploit is one that I actually found. Because I'm so great at this game, I managed to die to a kitty. Let me explain. In this game, defeating monsters and some of the bosses results in an inventory of monster coins. You beat an enemy, you get a coin. When you return to town, you sell the monster coins for gold. This is the main money-making mechanic in the game. Well, when I was battling the boss Goratan, a cross between Pikachu and a Cheshire Cat, I defeated him at the same time that I died. Not my best moment. But what I discovered was that when I continued the game, I had already secured the monster coin from beating Goratan, and now had the chance to fight him again. Boss coins can be worth much more than your typical run-of-the-mill monsters, though, and Goratan's coin is worth the most out of any in the game at a whopping 5k. Having a semi-consistent way of tying and dying to Goratan netting you 5k with each repetition is a pretty quick way to rack up some moolah. Groovy, man. Unfortunately, the time required to do this is on the order of tens of seconds each repetition. It's not quite fast enough for use in the current speed route, but it could be a useful piece for a potential reroute someday. Melt Exploit, Early Wine. If you've played this game, you might have some familiarity with this area. It's an area that both protagonists have to grapple with at least somewhat, as the required MacGuffin lies beyond a block of ice. Once you melt the first block and claim the MacGuffin, you find two additional ice blocks. There is additional treasure behind these, but many players have to wait until a return trip to this area to get close to melting all three ice blocks, as each seems to take around 30 MP each. Well, casual variety streamer Monochromium did this while playing the game, and it caught my eye. Using the unintended magic type, they were able to melt the ice block almost immediately with only 4 MP. With a little workshopping by myself and fellow runner Kestrel, we've been able to repeat the feat, burning our way through all three ice blocks using far less than 120 MP. My best used it only 64. Though this method is not consistent, it's largely based on the RNG of where the low flame magics land on the ice blocks, that is if they do at all. It opens up a routing idea for mint any percent that was previously unavailable. You can get the super magic effect and the rare wine, a tradable item that either can get you some extra cash or affects the prices in the shop that sells permanent stat increases, dropping the prices from 30k to just 5k, like the housing market crash you've been holding out for. This unfortunately hasn't found a place in the speed route as the super magic hasn't been shown to save much time, and the money route for mint any percent is already pretty tight. It doesn't leave you with very much to buy stat increases with, which also probably wouldn't save much time either due to the way the end game bosses count damage, but like Tidai Goratan, it's available, and grants other tools and options that could be useful for a potential reroute. Review of Notable Glitches Observed now let's look at some stuff with more potential. Since folks have been streaming this game in recent years, there's been a lot more documentation going on and some very weird stuff has been caught on camera. Enemy in wrong spot. Near the end of 2021, a casual variety streamer, Raka Rukri, encountered an enemy in a room in the game that typically has no enemies. We aren't sure what triggered this, how the enemy crossed over a load zone, nor have we been able to replicate it. This could have some interesting implications though for Ru, who picks up specific monster transformations throughout the speed route at some very specific times. If we were able to manipulate certain enemies to spawn in certain situations, this could break the Ru any percent category wide open. Dialogue Storage A few speedrunners have come across this on accident. Storage of the game's dialogues. Unfortunately, it hasn't been recreated outside of an active run so that we could test what we could do with it, but it could have major implications with how the game handles its many dialogues. In one instance, the menu to depart town was held open while walking around town. If this could be recreated, we could potentially leave town from anywhere inside the town. Very trippy. In another instance, multiple dialogues and cutscenes were crashed into each other, resulting in one overriding the other. This could lead to some trippy interactions, potentially, maybe even sequence breaks. Potential spots for glitches. So those are some of the major highlights as far as glitches and exploits found so far. But while we haven't found anything major so far, we have identified a few places within the game 
It could be exciting places for discoveries to happen at. Gamel Forest Switch. We'll start with Mint Any Percent. One of the more infuriating areas of the games casually is a labyrinthine puzzle known as Gamel Forest, where activating certain switches through the Ewok Village affect the direction this cart ride will take you. You traverse the rope bridges and power windmills to activate moving platforms and pass through repeating sections all while trying not to anger the Gamolians. This area has been routed pretty well in the speed route, but there is one spot that could save us at least a whole minute. In this area, there's a switch that we hit fairly early on in the level. Using a Game Shark cheat, we can hop up here to the other side, which is typically accessed way later in the level. By activating this switch early, the cart ride takes you to the level boss, skipping about half of the level. We don't have a way without cheats to get up here though, so any kind of bounce or jump or fly or proxy boost or some other way to get up this ledge would be a really cool discovery and could probably also be applied in other areas of the game, mainly sections of the Rue Any% percent where a high jump or double jump is required. Circle Magic – Mint Treetops Mint's magic in the game is a big part of her speedrun route. Many of the boss strategies rely on using specific magics at specific times to defeat them as efficiently as possible. However, there are some magic types that are faster than the existing strats, but can't be included in the route because of the time required to collect them. The one with the most time save is the circle magic. Now the normal way to get this is by first taking a 2.5 minute detour through the underground ruins to collect the power magic and then a 1 minute journey through Corona Forest to use black power magic to break this rock, and then execute a difficult jump with terrible sight lines to open this chest here. There are conceptually four ways to get circle magic. The intended way that I just spelled out is way too slow. Another way would be jump across the gap and then break the rock, which isn't possible because an invisible wall exists on this side until the rock is broken. Jump over or through invisible barrier on the ledge above somehow. This probably is not possible either. Or, find a way to glitch Mint into a Rue-only area called Treetops. The exits to this side of the rock over here, where the invisible wall does not exist, and then you would only need normal black magic to break the rock. Deadly Dash, Magic System Early Unlocks. One of the movements within the game that has had the least exploration or testing for speedrun applications is the Deadly Dash magic. This magic uses the Hyper Effect, which is only obtainable via an optional boss fight toward the very end of the game. It looks to me like it might have some potential for New Game Plus category, but if there was a way to glitch the game into unlocking other magic, I could see some potential in using this to get through barriers or dash past cutscene triggers. Does it do that? Not so far, but like I said, it's really not been tested much. Transformation System Similar to Mint's magic system, Rue uses a transformation system. Now the speed route is very tight on where and when you pick up certain monsters to transform into, and a big part of the reason why is because Rue can only store the four most recent transformation coins he has collected. Oftentimes, the speed route tries to retain the fastest moving monsters, or monsters with the double jump ability, as these give Rue the most mobility options. But if there was a way to get whatever monster you wanted whenever you wanted, a way more direct line could be routed through the game, skipping side areas and specific monster pickups entirely, or maybe a way to set certain coins to retain their monsters so that Saber Tiger could be preserved throughout the run. Cutscenes or dialogue skips. And lastly, this game has a lot of dialogue. For as much story as they crammed into this game in 1999-2000, it's not that big of a surprise. While we do have the luxury of holding down a button instead of mashing in most instances, we do not have any way to skip dialogue or cutscenes. As such, about an hour and 50 minutes of the run is spent watching dialogue and cutscenes. Some kind of skip or sequence break to cut down on time spent watching would go a long way in gaining some time save. The game also has a pretty perfect level up or equipment system for a sequence break to not be too debilitating on your attempt to finish the end game. As more equipment becomes available in the shop at later parts of the game, and you only need to purchase the most recent ones to catch up your in-game stats immediately. Hopefully this video gives you a good look into what's been going on in the Threads of Fate speed scene, 
and hopefully it's got your juices flowing thinking about possible glitches or major exploits that could still be found within the game. I'm not sure if I'll keep making videos like this. I think there are some other Threads of Fate topics I could touch on, but we will see. This was my first foray into something like this, and it wasn't easy for me to accomplish. I'll also mention that if you're a fan of this game, or would like to help in the glitch hunt, hop on over to the Threads of Fate community Discord. You've got plenty of great folks, great resources, and fun events going on there, and we would love to see you around. Or at the least, I hope this gives you a reason to try out the game for yourself, or pick it up again for another playthrough. Let me know if you find anything interesting. You never know what new discoveries can be found, even in a game that's been around for more than 20 years. Anyways, be sure to like and share this video if you enjoyed it, and drop a comment below to tell me what you think, or if you know of other potential glitches we should be investigating. Thanks for watching.